Hello and welcome back to Maypole Farms. This afternoon I thought we'd quickly come and check in on the cows to see how they're doing. And while I'm here, we can also see that this is what the grass should have looked like <laughs> when we were cutting it. This is fully grown grass. It's a little bit yellower, not as green as what we cut. So this would have given us a better yield on um, our other meadow. So if we wanted to, this one is now ready to cut. But we're not going to. We've got a lot of work to do yet. Maybe we'll get round to that before it dies off. But I wanted to just to come and check and see how things were doing with the cows. Uh, Feed-wise, they're not doing too bad. Um, hay is getting low, but they're still quite well stocked on the grass. So we're going to keep, keep them feeding off the grass for a bit. And then when that dwindles down... We'll start loading our hay in like we were before. Um, we are getting a little stockpile of slurry. We've got about uh, oh, just over 10,000 litres of slurry. And in front of us we've got 8,000 litres of manure. Which uh, neither of those is a lot, but it's, uh, it's a start. And we do have nearly 5,000 litres of milk. Which is really good, because that's worth about 10 grand. Um, I was thinking about trying to sell that. Just to get that that ten thousand pounds, but to get a a, uh, a tanker to uh, to cart the milk to and from, uh, it's going to cost us nearly ten grand, eight eight thousand nine and a half grand, that sort of region. So for that initial sale, we'd only make about two grand off it. So I'm going to wait until we've got enough for maybe two runs, and uh, we'll sell our milk then. So once we once we've got a good. 10, 15,000 litres of milk will uh, do a sale it will cover the cost of a um, trailer and then we should have at least 10 grand in the pocket as well now today's or well, this afternoon's big job because last time out we were liming all of our fields so we need to get out with the Amazon and we need to seed our meadows uh, so we can get our grass growing again now we'd left the, uh, the Massey here hooked up at the end of uh, last episode or not hooked up but parked up so uh, we'll get that on there I have already filled the um, cedar we've still got a couple of bags around there hopefully this isn't going to take up all of it we have a big seeding job today I feel like we're a bit stuttery. I may have to come in and out and uh, check what's doing that. If it persists, we might have to change some things. I don't know why. I haven't uh, changed any settings, but today I'm recording this just after the new update comes out, or came out, so who knows what incompatibilities there will be with uh, pre-update mods to uh, post-update mods. Anywho. We need to get out here and we need to get started on this field. Now I might do this the naughty way and do my headlands first, get a couple of laps in, uh, just so we've got a little bit of turn and space. Sometimes I like to do it properly, sometimes I do it a little bit naughty. Um, we're already set to grass, so we'll uh, turn ourselves on, as you do, who are. We are sowing, getting our grass in. Now, hopefully, this will uh, <laughs> grow nice and quickly for us because we do not have a lot of hay. So we've got that one field, and I purposefully, purposefully left that just in case it took us such a long cycle to get these fields done, get these meadows re-sown, and uh, grow when I'm ready to cut again. So we will have a little there bonus feed before we have to worry about selling um, or buying any bales we don't really want to have to be buying bales in if we can help it because that is an expensive way to feed the cows now, with regards to the update um, personally I haven't had a lot of issues with the game <coughs> excuse me I think I'm coming down with another cold I'm uh, full of it 
Um, side note, if that is the case, um, I may not do as many videos this week because it's just going to sound crap with me uh, as I uh, aggressively get worse. So uh, whatever videos I've got for this week, I may have already spaced out um, by the time this episode comes out. Just because I'd rather get better than uh, keep trying to stay up late to push out uh, episodes. But anyway, yeah, I've not had many issues, so hopefully with the uh, with the update we won't uh, get any new ones. Um, I didn't do a video on covering the updates or anything like that. A lot of channels have already done that. Uh, by the time I'd get round to doing it, it would be uh, extremely old news. So uh, I'll leave that to those that are full-time and uh, can do that sort of thing. I'll just stick to uh, having fun and playing the game and showing off a few maps as I come across them. Now, I will say that the map tours have uh, been doing pretty well, so I'm glad people are enjoying them. I quite like doing them. Um, I think I'm slowly getting better at them. Every now and then I have a little hiccup and I forget to show something or display something or go somewhere or what have you. But I think in 19 I only ever did like four map tours because it wasn't really what I was doing. And again, they're not always out <laughs> the day the map drops, so I'm uh, always thankful and grateful for anyone that does watch them as late as they come out. But that's why I'm trying to cover some of the, uh, the maps that we don't find on the Mod Hub, uh, because they don't get showcased, because everyone else is pretty much just showcasing Mod Hub maps, because that then uh, covers PC and console. And I know that the third party ones are only really there for uh, PC initially. Some of them come over to console though, so it's always worth checking them out. You never know, it could be a little glimpse into the future. I think this is going to be uh, quite a long afternoon, because we're not going to get this done as quick as we got the fertilizer. I think we were fertilizing at about 14 miles an hour I think whereas we're seeding at 9 so uh, this may even roll into tomorrow which you know can't be helped it's one of them things is these these jobs take a while uh, one or two of these meadows this one and the other one you know they're, they're a good sized meadow for our small equipment it takes a while um, while I'm not making uh, my content and stuff. I have started to watch a few more uh, channels with um, that are playing Farm Sim. I wasn't really watching many because I was trying not to uh, fall into that trap of copying other people or you know, being overly influenced by what they're doing. Didn't want to feel like I was competing. I was just wanted to do my thing at my pace. Um, I think it's uh, quite strange sometimes reading in their comments um, I think I was watching, uh, started watching Dagowin's um, Camston Farm series, uh, which I really like. Um, I'm not very far into it, just a few. But reading the comments, I always think it's strange. Um, people started uh, saying like they wish he'd concentrate on doing just one job and stop trying to jump around to lots of jobs in each episode. And that he's panicking and he doesn't get things finished and. Stop trying to do small fields and stuff like that. Yeah, I find the comments I get is that people don't want to watch me just do one job or just do one field. And so, like, oh, I'll, I'll take his audience, please. <laughs> they can come and watch me. And uh, those of you that want to see frantic gameplay of six jobs on the go and something else happening elsewhere, <laughs> stick with Dagger. Because I am like them people, I do prefer to watch someone doing a job. You know, you can have a worker off doing a job and you do a job. I guess while some people uh, jump between. And that's certainly not me knocking Dagger, he's been doing this a long time. You know, he's the, he's the pioneer. I think um, some people are just used to small field play styles, whereas some people like the big field play style. Um, which is quite strange for me because I do like big field play styles. I do like the uh, the progress of it, the, the slower realism of trying to do a job. 
but I like it to be irregular. I don't necessarily like it to be just like the, the square fields and yeah, the big American maps aren't always my cup of tea. But I do like the big play style or the slower play style that goes along with doing that in a realistic manner. But in watching his stuff, I've also found out that he doesn't like doing stone picking either. So uh, I'm not alone on that one. And I know a few of you guys have commented that uh, you too don't uh, don't like doing all the stone picking. Uh, I just think it's too much too often. That's the problem. The problem. The, the problem and the trouble. The problem. That's the problem with it. And I think, as I've said uh, probably many times already now, uh, my my issue with it is that they've added a a new process that added, that adds a more realistic process to the game and more realism. But they've done it in such an unrealistic way. You know, like I said, much like with weeds, great process to add, just uh, poorly executed. I can't make a game, so uh, <laughs> I should probably keep my mouth shut. Speaking of making things, um, over the weekend, my attempt at a Tom Pemberton farm uh, build on No Man's Land, the video should have gone out uh, Sunday, I believe, Saturday or Sunday. I'm having a bit of fun with that, uh, using a little bit of help from um, FS Landscapers Guides on his channel. Uh, in the video I've put links to his uh, guides, his playlist for that. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, check him out. Um, at the end of mine, I may strip it all right back, um, see how quickly I can rebuild it a couple of times, and then do a guide to my build, and maybe the rest of the map that I'm doing, because that's sort of the... Uh, the big bit is uh, making the map and getting the map the right size because with the uh, Clarkson's farm that I did um, last year for uh, FS19 when I built that in No Man's Land the map was really good it was detailed, had everything on it but because I tried to do it sort of a realistic scale everything was just too big way too big and uh, I think already um, my Pemberton build on No Man's Land is going a similar sort of way. I was just getting that scale. Um, I think I said in the video, sort of a big part of getting the scale right is that not all vehicles and buildings are to scale, so then once you get them in there and then you get a few tractors on a field, suddenly a field feels tiny. And with something like a big dairy farm, like with this one is hopefully going to be, it's alright having the nice farm and the farm build, but if you've not got your fields big enough, you're going to struggle to be able to feed and maintain the animals. And when you build a map in No Man's Land, it's not like coming onto someone else's built map. You build it and you're in that confines of that world, it doesn't, or this one won't consume the whole map like Clarkson's farm did because that would just be too much to do but if you do it too small you don't want to end up having to uh, let's say cheat and buy in bales and things like that uh, because you're not able to create enough um, by doing the processes properly and in doing um, like a Pemberton map where it is just all dairy pretty much I mean he's got, he's got a few sheeps and lambs but you're not really doing it for that there's not a lot of other income coming in other than the milk unless you're you know selling a bit of manure or got a um, digester on the go somewhere and bringing money in that way but if you're pumping stuff into a digester then that should be what you're using for feed and, and to uh, fertilize your land so only if you've got a bit of excess is that like a viable thing Anyway, I was, I've been having fun doing that. I say I've been having fun doing that. I've spent um, a day doing that last week, just for a change. Um, but getting that ready and sorting that out and doing that did then limit me as well on recording time. And, and I had to edit my video and sort my photos out and doing stuff. I have been trying to do a little bit more on 
my social media, so you guys definitely go check that out. Uh, links to uh, my Instagram and my Twitter are all down in the description. Jump on, have a look. Follow, I follow everyone back. If you drop a follow, I will follow you back, especially if you're uh, anything to do with uh, got gaming content going up or agricultural content or just generally something that I might enjoy. One thing that did make me chuckle though in sharing some of the screenshots um, on uh, on Facebook of that build was that um, part of MJ Modern's um, Facebook group, so I shared it in there because obviously he's supposed to be doing Edmonton's map I don't know, for about two years now and uh, yeah, so just to give people a little look, see everyone likes to share their stuff and uh, yeah, you know, it got got a good fair few likes. Not you know, nothing major, but a hundred or so, and uh, a bit of interesting comments and stuff like that. But then MJ Modern dropped in and uh, sort of started to take the piss out of it a little bit because it was being built in no man's land and stuff. And then uh, I think one one comment he left was telling me I needed to be careful because he was making the proper. Um, no Man's Land map, and that if I was going to start sharing stuff about, I needed Tom Pemberman's permission, and uh, which I just laughed at. I told him, oh, "Well, this is a build in No Man's Land. I don't need no one's permission for anyone or for anything." Thank you very much. And uh, just as he sent that message, and I was replying to him, I got a notification on my phone because I'd put it on Instagram as well, and uh, Tom Pemberton had given the pictures <laughs> a like. So I screenshot that and I put it in there and I said, oh, don't worry, Tom's given it his approval. I'm sure it will be fine. And uh, a little bit later, someone just commented underneath, well, that soon shut him up. <laughs> it's like people get so protective of what they're doing or what they think they have the right to and stuff. So, oh, people are just having fun. There's, like, there's hundreds of people building Pemberton maps out there. And if you're so worried about being the one to do it, do it, do, you know. If it's going to take you two, three years to make the map, don't get salty when other people start trying to make their own. It's not like I even did it in Giants Editor and created a map. Just doing a build in No Man's Land. It's, it's crazy how people are. It, it did make me laugh. Everyone else was quite well received. I think uh, some nice person uh, <laughs> called me a wanker, which was uh, always pleasant. Love that. Can't beat a little bit of uh, <laughs> uh, their Facebook social interaction. Share something you've done. Someone who's envious <laughs> calls you a wanker. Brilliant. But on the uh, topic of um, making and and mods in general. Uh, I was talking to the uh, the young man from Mower's Family Farm. Um, if you've not seen them or seen him and his family in their little uh, homestead farm that they've got going, uh, I'll put a link in the description to those guys as well. Uh, but I saw him on Instagram, and I was saying to him that I might take like a week off on the channel from creating videos and uh, spend some time trying to teach myself um, Giants Editor and see what I can do. Not necessarily to, to make the machinery mods, because I think that'll be a lot more complicated, but just to have an attempt at making you know, a basic map to start with and see what I can do and just see if I can get to grips with how that's done, because I really would like to do it. And I don't think it should be as hard as I feel it is, or that I made it out it is to myself um, with FS19. I see because it's something that's completely different, completely alien to anything I know. I'm a little bit instantly like, well, I'm not going to be able to do that. I tried, and I had a lot of troubles with uh, with 19, and just sort of gave up instantly. Whereas need to just spend some time with it and learn and make mistakes and not expect to be able to just do it. And to be able to do that, 
I need to be able to do it, you know, day after day or night after night after night and get to grips with it. So uh, I may have a week off at some point where maybe only one or two videos come out because I don't want the channel to go completely dead for a week. I just want to try and learn to do that for myself. And then if I do do anything, I can share it with you guys. I mean, I could record my learning process, but it would uh, it would be painful to watch <laughs> to start with. Maybe once I've uh, got to grips with it, we could do some recording or some streaming of it. But yeah, that's another thing that I'm thinking about trying in the future. Always looking to expand. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that I never thought this would be something I'd be doing, so who knows? almost a year to the day as well um, we passed a year of the channel <laughs> that's a week back didn't even realise so yeah uh, Mr Farquhar Gaming or just Mr Farquhar as it started out to start as in the beginning uh, been going for a year now so I'd like to thank everyone that has uh, been with us and uh, supported throughout that year and going forwards I think at the time of recording this, we are about 540 subscribers, nearly 90,000 views, and I think it's 8,700 watch hours in a year, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Absolutely mental, so yeah, thanks, thanks to everyone that has uh, helped in putting them numbers up. We are slowly tiptoeing towards them numbers that YouTube are looking for to uh, allow us to apply for the partner program. So hopefully, at some point this year, we'll reach that. That'd be nice. And then that'll also open up the doorway to uh, look into Giants partnership and uh, seeing what can come of that. Now, one of the big things for them is that you don't play any other farming games which I think isn't really a problem because <laughs> all the others are rubbish <laughs> uh, I know there's um, cattle and crops or whatever it's called that's supposed to be half decent um, I've never played it but everything else just looks <laughs> looks absolutely awful uh, Farmer's Dynasty I gave that a crack yeah, that's not awful that's just really slow. Like, really slow. Very different dynamic to the game. But we are slowly getting through this. I think we're going to have to be, uh, be heavy on the editing. We may require quite a time lapse on the next field. It's nearly 3 o'clock already. Oh, it's gone free. Look at that. So we've been at this since probably about half past, must be half past 12 in game. So we've been doing this for a while. This should be the last little strip of this meadow. That'll be our first one sown. Half past three. I think before we get started on the next one, we will uh, pop back, refill down to 45% on seed capacity. That little bit there, look. Frustrating. There we go. Again, I'm not 100% on whether we need to worry about weeds coming through. Um, as in, I'm not sure if the subsoiler gives oh, another little bit, gives you the same benefit as a plough does in preventing uh, weeds in the next growth stage, or even if weeds grow through in grass. I haven't done a lot of grass work, so uh, yeah, we didn't have any weeds in the grass that we cut. So uh, who knows? Who knows what we'll find? Some of you will know. If you do, drop it down in the comments. Give me a little heads up on what to expect. We have got a weeder. 
but <laughs> I didn't even do a very good job with the weed and because some of those weeds had already grown to their final stage you took some of them out but not all of them it was uh, it was another one of them things that was a little bit weird alright we'll go in cab as we negotiate I think I've been pretty good and doing a fair amount out of cab on this series he says in cab but compared to say Ube which is uh, still more in cab let's try and get around the other side where's the post gone not the easiest uh, bit to get into there we are did it before, I'll do it again. So we shall refill. Squeeze ourselves back out. Still a little clip there. So this could take another ooh, three, yeah, three hours. This could be bringing us up to seven o'clock by the time this uh, second meadow is sown I may have to work through the night to get some of the other ones done because some of these are going to need a little extra fertilizer on I should really roll them all I think, I think that's definitely something we should be doing but I'm going to crack on get a looped headland around here, probably go around a few times, and then we'll do a little bit of back and forth. Uh, it's, you know, it's exactly the same as what we did on the last field, but that's what it takes to sell these fields, doing the same thing. That's farming. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, jump you guys back in a little bit later on. Turns out I forgot to uh, <laughs> turn my mic back on. I'm going to start recording again. So I'll pop this in post-production. Uh, we got to about 7 o'clock in the evening. Just about finished this field. And uh, yeah, I decided that would be the time to, to call it a day on the work. We normally finish around about 7 anyway. So I thought that'd be best. There's still a lot to do. We've got the uh, cow pasture, the sheep pasture, and the horse pasture still to seed. I'm going to try and work through them through the night. So I'll have a busy night, so that also means I won't be able to go out and do any contracting of any sort. Uh, just get these done because we don't want to do back to back episodes of, uh, you know, the back of the Massey with the cedar on it. We've got other things we need to do. We need to progress through each month so we can get the years going and uh, we can get some growth on the farm. So, hopefully, you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, give it a big fat thumbs up down below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notification on, find out when new videos are going live. As always, comments and feedback down there. Let me know what you think. Um, still uh, haven't had anyone say whether they'd like to see some manual attach on this series. If you do, let me know. I'll soon stick it on. I enjoy doing it. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.